And tonight, only on WHSV, it's been 30 years since historic flooding devastated parts of West Virginia and the Shenandoah Valley. On November 4th and 5th, 1985, heavy rain fell across the area. Big Meadows recorded nearly 8 inches, while other locations across the valley recorded four eleventh inches of rain. The heavy rainfall on an already saturated ground caused drivers to rise to high waters and lead to many water rescues. When the South River crested in Waynesboro, water damaged over 200 homes and businesses in downtown. The South Fork of the Shenandoah River has spilled over Route 33 in Elkton. Just look at this incredible video of Route 33 near Elkton and then how it looks today, much more peaceful. And the situation in West Virginia, though, was even worse. That's right. The hardest hit areas included Pendleton, Hardy, and Grant counties. Meteorologist Aubrey Urbanowitz shows us the progress made in the hardest hit areas in the 30 years since the disaster. 800 roads and bridges are blocked by high water or mudslides. Known as News Center 3 in 1985, this is WHSV's coverage 30 years ago. The concentrated uh, rainfall here that you see, the highest amount was mainly in the West Virginia area. Telling the story of the historic flooding of 1985. The water rose to the second stories of some houses, forcing families to evacuate. The election day flood devastated many parts of our viewing area. Seeing the town of Petersburg, it just looked like a war zone. In late October of 1985, Hurricane Juan moved across the Gulf Coast and dropped several inches of rain across the area. Then an area of low pressure develops and stalls out across our area on November 4th. This is when the devastating flooding began. Telephone communications from here to West Virginia have been virtually non-existent, so we have no details about flooding in any particular area. Peggy Bobo had only been a Grant County dispatcher for a few months when the floods hit. All this debris would bank up in these canyons. It would create like a dam, and it would break loose with this unbelievable force. The force of the water was tremendous. And the water came up all of a sudden. Jim Humphrey was a West Virginia state trooper. And my state police vehicle started floating in the water. When the storm hit, Humphrey was responding to rescue calls. As the roads began to flood, he became one of those who needed to be rescued. I bailed out and I swam to the side of a mountain and I climbed up as far as I could get. Trooper Humphrey spent the night clinging to a tree, fighting off the cold and the heavy rain. I kept hearing these uh, god-awful sounds, crashing and power lines popping and Sparks going everywhere and the smell of propane tanks. He was rescued the next morning. Many areas became isolated and cut off due to the severe flooding that washed away roads and bridges. Butch Kreitz worked for the West Virginia Department of Highways at the time of the flood. We worked from daylight to way after dark, trying to put things back together and get the roads open to get the debris out of them. There was mobile homes across the road, you know, we had to get all that stuff out of the road. And it was just, just a big mess. 30 years later, Peggy Bobo is now the director of emergency services in Grant County. She recalls one memory that still haunts her to this day. We kept getting calls, you know, about these 12 people. And we tried everything. I mean, people people tried to people tried to come down from the north to get to them. People tried to come through Jordan Run to get to them. And there was no way to help those people. And and of course, eventually the calls stopped coming because it got darker and the water got deeper. And you're sitting there and you don't know if that house is going, you don't know where they're at. And, and there's a point where even the best prepared people in emergency management have to just do some praying because there's nothing else you can do. Out of the 12 people in that house, only one survived. I lost two good friends. The emotions of the flood still running fresh through the minds of those who lived through it. 38 people lost their lives in West Virginia due to the flooding. Now roads and bridges, they have been rebuilt and towns, including Petersburg, have been revitalized over the last few decades. Wow. I mean, I, I, when I lived in Roanoke, I remember hearing about the floods in mm -hmm. 85 and then hearing how far it stretched up here. 
So yeah. what's being done to make sure it doesn't happen again? Well, improvements have obviously been made to communication, mm -hmm. more radio towers, also river monitoring and flood forecast monitoring. Because West Virginia is so mountainous, most of the livable land is actually on a floodplain. So a levee was built in Petersburg after the 1985 flood to prevent this from happening. And you can hear more about the advancements and some of those memories, including our original 1985 broadcast. That's on WHSV.com. Right, thank you, Aubrey.